Hi, it's Sarah here from Crafting and Stamping. Thank you for joining me and tonight it's my online workshop. It takes place the first Wednesday of every month and I'm looking forward to sharing some new projects with you using some of our celebration goodies. So I'll just get set up and let you see my desk. Let's get organised here. So that we've got a good view of what's happening. Hi Beth, I might not see everybody as they join, um, but hopefully I'll pick up one or two. So, right, so um, these are the make and take packs that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. And we're going to be working primarily with the Rings of Love uh, DSP pack which I've been um, working with all week um, but as you can see we're also working with some of our uh, other pretty papers that we've still got in celebration at the moment as far as I know so if you've got a celebration catalogue this is going on just for the rest of this month so the great thing is that you get a free product with a £45 purchase or £90 purchase, some of the, the products require £90 purchase um, and then you get to choose either a £90 product or two forty fives. so you can split it no problem. So I'm going to be working with these papers but also with the Silver and Gold Designer Series papers as well and you get 24 sheets of 6x6 in that pack. With this one, we're getting 12 sheets, two each of six double-sided designs. So I'm going to show you those in a second. But I also just wanted to let you know that because we're a good way through now the celebration period, uh, stamping up, rather than risk us running out, well, there, there is still a risk that we're going to run out of products from this little celebration uh, brochure, but what they've done is there are some items that are actually in the annual catalogue that you can now get as celebration products. So the best thing to do is take a little look online in the store to see what's included. So let me show you these papers. So these are the Rings of Love papers and I'm just posting a bit later tonight a new home card that I have made with this one. Let me show you. That's the card I've made with it. Um, so we've got sort of new home, we've got blue tips as I would see them. Um, we've got a lovely autumnal palette there, uh, toadstools and leaves, Christmas promsettias, spring flowers, that's all on the one side and then on the other side we've got some more um, these are a, a great background patterns some great ones for masculine cards again sort of spring summer colors and some beautiful mints and blues let me just show you one or two cards that i've already made with these this was this little gnome card that uses this as the background. On Monday, I shared this one where I fussy cut out a couple of these and laid them up with that still as the background. If you get my newsletter, then this is the one that I shared in the newsletter last night, which uses the sort of summer flowers papers. And for those that aren't usually following me, um, let me run through what happens. This is an online workshop and it's free to watch, absolutely no charge. But if you place an order with me tonight, then you're going to be able to qualify for certain goodies along with. So if you spend any amount at all, you'll get a thank you card from me always. If you spend over £30, you're going to get our Ideas Tutorial Bundle. Now, I'm a member of an Ideas um, 
demo group which is worldwide and we get together once a month and post a blog hop and we have the tutorial bundle showing the products that we've made. So if you spend over £30 you'll get the tutorial bundle and what I contributed to the bundle of this month was this card, this anniversary card and little gift box and this uses the Rings of Love papers as well. So that's the ideas tutorial bundle. You don't get the items, you get a tutorial, uh, a PDF sent through email uh, that gives you the instructions for making these. If you spend over £45, then you're going to get to choose your own celebration product. If you send, uh, spend over £50, then you're also going to get my make and take pack from tonight. Uh, it may vary just slightly colour wise, etc. from this. If you spend over £70, then you're going to get a thank you card from me, the ideas tutorial bundle, your celebration goodie, your make and take pack, and you're also going to get a pack of 24 sheets of 6x6 DSP and specialty paper as a special thank you from me. So let's get stuck in. So the first card that we're going to make tonight is a nice little masculine card using our autumn papers. So let me pop that to one side because that is the pack going out and you when you, if you um, get a make and take pack from me then you're going to get let's just get that to come into focus good um, if you're going to get the make and take pack from me then you'll get these elements I can't send any stamped images so you will need to provide stamps yourself so I'm just going to use the happy birthday and this is from the Peaceful Moments stamp set and I'm using soft suede ink. Hi Lynn, I've just seen you come up on comments. Thank you for joining me. And I know you've seen a sneak peek of these. So let me show you. This is what we're going to make. So I'm just going to stamp the happy birthday uh, down here. Let's get that straight and stamp that there. just move the ink out of the way because I don't want to make a mistake with that and get it all over. So what we're going to do and of course if you decide that you want to use the other side of this if you get make and take pack you make it yours. Um, you do get instructions may email to you for putting the cards together. They are pretty simple because I want to make sure that everybody can have a go with them. You can always step them up a little yourself if you're an experienced crafter. You can add your own elements to these. So I'm going to pop that on there and we are going to adhere this panel to the soft suede one. So just some simple layering and I've just used again soft suede. Now for the little acorns, these are from the Ringed with Nature bundle. You don't have to have this if you're getting the um, the Rings of Love DSP, but it is it is designed to go together. The idea is that you've got some of the same elements that are in the papers and you've also got and i should have also got out the you've also got dies and somewhere i've got a an embossing folder 
that will emboss the tree rings as well. So this whole bundle, there we go, moving in and out of it tonight. Um, so I, you can use these, these little stalks, these are good fun, and you can get them off. So I've used this for my acorn, so I've created the acorn nut with that, but you can turn it the other way up and make it into a toadstool. So you've got a great way of using these in lots of different fashions. So, so what we're going to do now is just pop these together. I'm going to use mini dimensionals. I've die cut one of the little branches, there's several little branches in that die set and if we just pop some of these behind then what we can do is just have that like that I'm going to pop a mini dimensional on the back of here now it would potentially just about show through but by the time we've done, I'm just going to pop dimensional on the back of here. And we're just going to tuck that up to it. And there we are. You can't see any dimensionals sort of hanging over. I'm going to use regular dimensionals on the back of here. To pop them up onto this card and then we're going to pop this up onto the card front so nice and easy I think this makes a great masculine card for those hard to craft for fellas in our lives so to finish it off on the inside what I did was take the stamp set and now this is where it gets tiny little bit tricky not not too bad I'm going to show you how we do it so I'm going to use soft suede ink again this is all soft suede and we'll grab The branch and I'm just going to ink and stamp off the branch to get a slightly lighter shade like that and I really should have picked up my mat there we are now I'm going to clean these stamps later. I'm going to stamp. This ink pad is very juicy. I've re-inked it and it's a bit too juicy actually. So I'm going to ink that one at full strength. Now the next thing is we've got these which is a whole tree trio of either mushrooms or acorns whichever way you want to see them I'm just going to ink up one of these and I'm going to go for that bottom one so what I'm going to do is just ink it down there in that corner so it's just inked up the bottom one I'm stamping it off to get a slightly lighter colour and then stamp that over the top like that and there we've got a bit of variety in our colours and even though we've got all three on the block there 
it's not too difficult to just colour up one of those. So now I'm going to take the sentiment and this is also from the set. It's got some great sentiments in it. Uh, I'm just using the thinking of you. Like I say, this is a great set for all the seasons. So ink that up. And I always do my stamping first. If you've not been at one of my online workshops before, I always advise it so that if there's a mistake, we can flip over and use the other side. I've also included in the kit a little piece of the same pattern of DSP used on the front. This is just a little bit of leftover that would get thrown away. And there's no need for that. So we're just going to add that at the base of the insert like that. But if we put that on last, then if we've needed to flip the card at all to stamp on the other side, then we've not wasted that bit of paper. So do that. And there we go. And that is our first card cute little card. Like I say, I think of it as being a masculine birthday card, but it could be anybody's autumn birthday, to be honest. Right. So we're going to move on now to make a Christmas card. And let me check. So the Christmas card and this is what we're creating with this. So again, we're still using these Rings of Love papers, but this time we're going for the Christmas Pronsettia. Again, it doesn't have to be Christmas. It really doesn't. So, and for this one, we're using the Brightest Glow and Labels of Glow dies. Now you can get these as a bundle. Any of our bundles you get to save 10% and I've not even finished making this one up as you can see. These are designed to go together but only in a very sort of rough way. These can be used separately for all sorts of occasions, to be quite honest. And we're going to use this one shortly for a different purpose. So what we are using here is we've got this label and you might have just seen, I've also got an insert that uses this piece here and this is a, a really pretty die these these dies are absolutely gorgeous but i'm going to warn you now that they do take a bit of fussing with because there's so many little bits like this they do take some work to get the pieces out now i've still got my brush and I should have got a pad as well. Well, I have got a pad, but I'm not quite sure where it's gone. And in a second, I'll show you. This is an old version. You can now get this to go onto the Take a Pick tool. So you can get a little brush that just attaches to the end of the Take a Pick tool. And really, it is a lot quicker to use the little brush than to have to go through and poke all of these out with a 
a pokey tool or a needle or something like that. So I'm just going to carry on going through and get all of these out. Um, the other thing that I would say to you, because I had a, a, a problem uh, with my shoulder last month, I am quite aware of how much pressure I need to put on my cut and emboss machine. And these dies do take a little bit more brute force to go through the machine than an open die. Because you've got so many tiny fiddly little bits here, it's not so easy to go through. It's not, like I say, a major problem, but it does require a little bit more effort. So if you are troubled with a bad shoulder you might want to skip this one and look at some of the more open dice that are out there however if you're fairly fit like i say this is good fun or you could get kids or grandkids helping out and poking out all the extra little bits so i think that's just about done and that gives you an idea then and you can see what a mess it makes as well so having said that you could use these little bits of confetti in a shaker card so nothing's wasted if you don't want it to be so, okay. and i'll hoover that lot up later right so that's my insert and what I'm using as well on this is our glimmer papers. So let me just bring those in quickly to show you. So these are our wonderful glimmer papers and I have been using some of these just recently. So this is the Brightest Glow bundle where you can get the sentiments and the dice together. And just before that, over the page, you've got the uh, Glimmer specialty paper. These are in Evening Evergreen, very vanilla and gold. And I've just taken a couple of strips I've gone with the evening evergreen and the gold because I've already using Poppy Parade here. Um, so I thought it would be nice to add these. So you've got a choice. I have cut these. They should match the length exactly. So all we're going to do is, and you can see that this has got the trees on the back, but I'm using the poinsettia side. So I'm just going to stick this and it really doesn't matter which way up you go with this. And I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue for sticking these on just because I think it's a little bit easier to be able to slide them about into position. So I'm just going to pop that on like that. You could go right to the edge. There's so many different ways you could put this together. I'm going to go with it there. And I think it's really pretty to actually use two different thicknesses of the glitter paper, the glimmer paper. Um, I think it works better than using two exactly the same. There we are. And I'm just pressing the gold up to the evergreen to make sure that they're nicely lined up. So like I say, this is the 
label cut out with the um, Labels of Glow die from Basic White and I'm just going to use the Merry Christmas from the Brightest Glow stamp set and I'm going to use Poppy Parade with it. So my label on the back is just coming up a little bit, so I'm just going to press that back into place. And get that well inked up. Lots of light tapping. Make sure my label's straight. And the Merry Christmas just fits so nicely inside this label. Hold it there a couple of seconds and there we are. So... This is going in and out tonight for some reason. Let's try and get that. The focus isn't working very well. Why is this not focusing well? I'm sorry about this folks, I don't know why the focus is, is so poor tonight. That's a little bit better, coming into focus again. Right, so I'm going to pop some dimensionals on the back of here. some beautiful festive pearls that kind of fit with the suite of the glimmer paper etc um, like to just get that lined up uh, but I've actually gone with the red rhinestones for this and simply put one at either side of the label and then gone with three up above and I think that looks fairly central And I've ended up smudging that ink a little bit. That's something that I do tend to try and warn about. But in this heat, it's a little bit difficult. Is that why this is... So... Let me... Right, thanks Lee, you're saying it's okay to you, so maybe it's just something at my end. So, Right, so we've now got our insert, and I'm taking another sentiment from that same stamp set, from the same Brightest Glow stamp set, and let's get this inked up. Now, we've already got this die cut out, so to be honest, we do need to get this to work on this side. If you do make a mistake and it's something like this where we've got a die cut piece and it doesn't make sense to stamp it again on the reverse, if you turn it, you could use it that way, 
but it, the way that it cuts through, you can tell that that's the back. Or if you're a crafter, you can tell that that's the back. If you're a non-crafter, it might not make any difference. I'm getting the pad out and I don't need it. So what I was saying is if you do make a mistake, what I would recommend is stamping it again onto another piece of card and sticking that over the mistake. So that's that, I'll just move that out of the way. And again, we've got a little bit of leftover paper from the front. Never wasted. And I've got inky fingers. So I'm going to have to put this a little bit lower to cover that ink smudge that I've put. There we are. Now, for this, um, I am going to use my seal around these edges. And I have left just a little bit of room, as it were, at the top. But it's not really enough room to get in with the seal. So what I recommend is just a teeny trial of the multi-purpose liquid glue to hold that in place. So we're going to pop that in here and pop that down like that and just press along just for a couple of seconds for that multi-purpose liquid glue to hold and then I'm going to turn it all over and press from the back there so that's our second card tonight and now we're going to move on we're moving away from the Rings of Love and we're moving on to the Silver and Gold DSP and this is so pretty that I think it just needs a pop of colour to finish the card off and again we're using the dies, the labels are glow dies and I've used both this die and then die cut out with a circle. And I've also used this one for the central label. And we've still got a little bit of that glitter paper, the glimmer paper that we were using on the last card. I've got a few little specks that still need poking out with so few it's quicker and easier to use the tape pick tool like that. I'll move those out of the way. So for my sentiment for this one, I've gone with one of our charming sentiments and I just went with the thank you. And it occurred to me after chatting with a, a friend, I think it was last week, I'm losing track of the weeks. Um, when I get a stamp set and start using it, using a lot of the, the pieces, what I do is they, they come like this with another piece of plastic over them. But what I do is actually I move them to the back of the case and put them over the image to make sure that I've got all the stamps there. What I then do is just put those plastic sheets behind uh, the cover so that I've still got them if I need them. But having them like that actually over the image makes sure that I know I've got a full set there. There's no stamps missing. So I just thought I'd pass on that little tip. So we're going to use that. This is Tahitian Tide that I'm using, one of our beautiful new ink colours. 
um, and I think that most of our brand new ink colours actually all work really well with these papers. Now we've got these papers in gold and in silver. The pack contains both gold and silver and it contains both spots like this and stripes. So I'm simply going to pop that on my card front. I'll take the insert out for the moment. And just to add a little bit extra, we're going to pop uh, our glimmer paper down there. And it looks like I've lost my ribbon. So I'll grab a bit in a second. So again, I just find that the tom with such a narrow strip, the tombow's the easiest way to actually adhere this. So I'm going to pop that just a little way up from the base. And again, I can slide that about a little bit until it's in position. I've got my label here and this time I do want my mats because this is photopolymer. So it just needs that little bit of extra cushioning to give you a nice crisp result. So I'm using Tahitian Tide ink. Lots of light tapping. I've actually turned this around so that I've got spots top and bottom as it were. But it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to use dimensionals on both layers. So let's pull up some dimensionals. So I'm just going to stick three and one in the centre there and there's no real right way around with this. Just going to get that centred up and just go with three for balance. If it's a square, I use four and one in the centre. If it's a circle, I use three. So, there we are. That's that. Now, I'm using also the Fine Sparkle Gems. These are actually from the Gnome Suite. And that is actually Pacific Point rather than Tahitian Tide, but I just find that these work so well with all sorts of wrong colours, as it were. So I'm just going to scatter these about. Because of that sparkle, they go with other things besides. Now, I forgot to include my ribbon, so I'll do a quick bow. Hopefully my fingers aren't too moist with the heat. So I make two loops as bunny ears. One under, one over and close that up a bit. And there we are. Now this is lovely ribbon, 
but it does fray so be aware of that and trim the bow sort of right at the end because it it's likely to split apart you can see on this one it's already starting to split apart so i'm picking up a mini glue dot with my bow and i'm just going to fold that over a little and pop that below like that so that's that right yes so i just wanted to give another idea for using what is actually a christmas stamp so where it is oh it's a different set yes so this is actually a christmas light set which is still part of the suite but there's another stamp set and die set and those little bits get all over um i just thought i would show you that you can use these in unconventional ways now i am going to need to stand up for this because I need to kind of see what I'm doing and keep straight with it or as straight as I can so it's only a little stamp so I don't want to over ink it and I want that pretty central I think that's about right so I'm going to start with one up right and then go either side working out from the center works best and don't press too hard on the ink pad and I don't think I've got that quite central otherwise those wouldn't go but never mind and I don't like that white space there so I'm just going to go that way and then I'm doing exactly the same on the other side so it's worth having a little look at your stamps to see if you've got something like this that you could just create a pattern with small stamps work very well for it and even though it's not perfectly even it still creates a nice pattern So just have a little look at your stash and see if there's anything that you could use in a similar way. Um, great to get extra work out of those stamps. And it, you can tell it's a Christmas tree, but only if somebody actually tells you that it's a Christmas tree. So where have I put my seal? I put that there. Ah, oh, there it is. Underneath the ribbon. So and just a reminder that, uh, like I say, celebrations coming to an end at the end of this month. Of course, we're going to have some uh, new things to keep you busy crafting. Um, but I love to make the most of these extra products, these freebies. Um, and I know that the brushed metallic foils is one of the 
extra items that's been made available as a celebration goodie. And I am dying to get some more brushed metallic foil ready for Christmas. Uh, so this weekend I'm going to be going through my cardstock to see what cardstock I need to reorder. I might as well um, buy the cardstock now and get some freebies than wait and get it later. So what we're going to make finally is this little bag. And this one I've made in the silver, but I'm now going to demonstrate it to you in the gold. Now this is just a teeny bit tricky, um, but I don't think it's too difficult. You can use um, the paper trimmer for doing the scoring for this. But personally, I do like to use my scoring tool. Uh, I just find that I've got a little bit more control with it. So let's try and make sure that that's in shot for you. Uh, it does come with little markers that you can pop in. And, and I've mislaid some of mine. So. So we're going to start by scoring at one and a half and at four and a half. So even on both sides. And then we're going to rotate and we're going to score again at two and a half and at three and a half. Like that. And that's all scoring that we need to do. So I do recommend now pre-folding these lines and just burnishing with a bone folder. It just makes the next step a lot easier and it helps if you've not got inky fingers with this lovely white paper but hopefully I'm going to get away with it. So, this is the tricky bit. And what we're going to do is, if you pop your finger, I've, what I've done is I've got the narrow bit going across the centre horizontally. I've got one piece folded in, and I'm going to put either my finger or um, the point of the bone folder on here and I'm just going to fold this back so that this line, this folded line, meets up with the edge of the paper and then burnish that into a diagonal fold. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're taking this folded line here and lining it up with the edge of the paper here. And create a fold line. Then we do exactly the same thing on the other side. So I'm lining that up. And it's easier if you fold, fold it over in and then fold it back. So again, final one, we're taking the fold line there, lining it up with the edge of the paper there. And then just squash that down. Then all we're going to do now is stick these sections so you don't want any glue on the triangle, you want the glue on this slightly odd shape here. And we want it at both sides. 
then I'm going to fold that in and just hold it in place for a couple of minutes, not even minutes, a couple of seconds. And then we're going to do the same thing. We want just a little bit of glue on that shape and on that shape and fold those in and then what happens is you've got a little box bag as it were what i like to do if you want to you can stick these down at this point what's great about these is if you want to make a bunch of these for christmas treats for wedding favors for whatever it might be you can get it to this part, part, get it to this point, and you can store them flat like that. So you can just pop them in the cupboard like that. And then when you're ready to go, you can finish off. So what I like to do is just tuck the sides in a little bit. So just bend them in that little bit so that the top can meet. Now, what I've got here is our label me lovely i've used the label me lovely punch to punch this shape but you can use anything so you can use um punch shapes that will fit along the top you can um use dies whatever you might happen to have so I'm now going to just pop this on here and score it in half. This will already be done, actually. I've already done it ready for you in the kit, but I just wanted to show you how I was doing it. So if you've got the kit, you've got it and you've already got it actually punched so what I'm doing is just folding that in half and using a hole punch and I just want to make sure that the holes are punched evenly fairly evenly so that's what you will get in your kit if you want the make and take kit, if you, if you place an order and want the make and take kit. Then I'm just folding it over here and I'm making a mark, a tiny mark. I think I can just kind of see it could be easier. But you'll be able to do this bit even if you've not got a hole punch. So I'm actually going to use a hole punch but if you haven't got a hole punch then you'll still be able to do this. You'll just need something to poke through where that mark is. I'm actually like I say going to use my hole punch again and I can just look through the hole till I see the mark with those held together and do the same then on that side. So I do it so I can see through. Now for this, I'm actually just going to glue on one side because you still need to be able to open this bag. So if you glue it on both, it's glued in place and the person would have to tear their way in. So I'm going to pop that on there, hold that on just for again a few seconds. And then we fold that over and we take our 
ribbon now I have done this already I recommend that you just snip it to a point to be able to get this through the holes obviously you need to put whatever you're wanting inside And this is the tricky bit because, like I say, this ribbon does fray. So I'm just going to twist it around a little. And if it's really a problem, then use the pick to just try and push the ribbon through. Once you've got some strands through, the rest of it will go through easier. Then we need to make sure that it's all held closed. And it will try and pull open. And again. There we are. Once it's in place, you can start to straighten out. My ribbon's got twisted, so let's get it untwisted. I'm not going to worry about that fraying just for the moment. My main point is to tie my bow and then I can trim that frayed bit off. And if you can't do a bow, just do a knot. There we are. Now, I've also included this tiny piece here was actually one of those shapes from the cracker that I used last month. And I'm going to use that same sentiment when I can find it. The lots of thanks. This is actually from returning stamps at the Penguin Place. And I'm using the Tetian Tide again. And let's just grab that. Now, if you're thinking about buying um, a fair bit, then it's always the best deal to join my team, uh, join up as a demonstrator, and then you'll get discounts on future orders. You get to choose um, a whole bunch of things for your starter kit, uh, whatever you want in it. If you want any help, please get in touch and you can drop out any time. So, you know, don't worry that it's a huge commitment. Uh, stamping up is not like that. Um, so there we are. Right. So that's what we've got for tonight. We've got our birthday card and where did I put the Christmas card? Here we are. Christmas card as well. And so that's what we've got. So that would is what you'd be able to make with your make and take kit if you want to place an order and you qualify for the make and take kit. Let me bring that back in. So, like I say, if you place an order, any size order, you're going to get a thank you from me. If you want to place an order and it's over £30, then you're going to get the Ideas Tutorial Bundle emailed to you. If it's over £45, then you're going to get your own choice from Celebration Goodies and those that are online. 
If it's over £50, you get the thank you, the ideas tutorial bundle, the make and take, uh, uh, and the make and take kit, the celebration goodie, make and take kit. And if it's over £70, then you get all of that. Plus, I will send you 24 sheets of DSP and specialty foils. They are retired, but they um, are, are great to still use for all sorts of projects. So I hope that that's given you a few ideas tonight. Uh, thank you for stopping by and watching with me. Um, it's great to, to have you with me. Thank you very much. And I shall see you next month. Bye.